the shock on because someone had to carry him and lay him before the gate every day for him to beg for alms. Right. I can't imagine the look of, or even what was going through the mind of those men. Maybe they came back to get him that afternoon to pack him back to wherever it is he goes. Come on. And he wasn't there. And he wasn't there no more. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The servitude was over. And maybe they thought, well, maybe he passed away. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe somebody, some mischief has befell him. Yeah. And they said, what happened to him? And they said, well, the last time I seen him, <laughs> he was running down the street. Hallelujah. Oh, my, 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 my. And Lord. he got up that morning and he thought that everything's going to be the same as it's always been. Oh. 38 years, this is just another day. I'm going to beg for alms and then they're going to pack me back home. My life of misery will never end. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> but that day would be different. Praise Amen. Lord. The woman that went to the well, she thought, well, this is just another day. She wasn't thinking nothing different. She went to that well every day. I don't know how many days she'd been there to get water, but every day she'd take her old water pot, put it up on her head, and pack it down to the well, and Get her some water and go back. Same old grind she's always in. Same old miserable life she's yeah. always had. But yeah. what this day wouldn't be the same as the other days. Oh, Hallelujah. She would God. get there and there would be a man sitting on the well. I can see her now as she, as she begins to get close. She's probably yeah. thinking, who is that? Mm. Somebody's sitting on the well. Yeah. She might have mm. got aggravated. Right. And when she got close enough and seen it was a Jew, she probably sure didn't know what was going on. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. well, you're in my way. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank God he got in her way. Amen? Yeah. Right. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My, my, my. <laughs> he changed everything that day. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Jesus. I want to talk to you this morning about something that is a rare commodity in the day in which we live. Might have mentioned it last week because this kind of goes hand in hand with what we preached last week. But I want to talk to you about something that is very hard to find in the lives of people. Most people that you talk to today, they feel like there's just as lower than a snake's belly and everything's going wrong and everything's going bad and gloom, despair, and agony on me and deep, dark, depression, excessive misery. If it weren't for bad luck, they'd have no luck at all. Amen? They feel like that the whole world is against them. Right. Amen? They feel like that just everything that can go wrong will go wrong. Has gone wrong or will go wrong. Amen? They're simply waiting for the next shoe to drop. Right. Amen? Amen? So I want to talk to you this morning about something that you can't hardly find. Most people you encounter do not have what we're going to talk about this morning. And at times, it's a struggle. I'm not trying to put myself on a plane higher than other people because, listen, just because I'm a pastor, just because I've been preaching for almost 30 years, that don't make me, that don't make me uh, you know, set apart and, and, and not go through things like you do. I go through things. Amen? Amen. I have days that are not. I wouldn't rank them as the best. Amen? Oh, <laughs> Amen? Hallelujah. So just because you're a preacher, just because you're a pastor, it doesn't keep you from being a part of this crowd. Come on. Because at times it's a struggle for all of us in our spiritual walk, what we're going to talk about Amen. today. Amen? Oh. Especially in the heat of the battle. Yeah. Should it be this way? No. But it is. Why? Because the flesh is weak. Oh, yeah. The spirit is always willing, yeah. but the flesh is weak. Yeah. Amen. And as long as we are in this flesh, we're going to have to deal with these type of things. Mm -hmm. But thank God today there is a place to find what we're going to talk about that most people can't find. They're looking for it. They they think they might have found it over here, till over here disappears. They think they might have found it in this that they can grasp onto, they can hold onto it until that which they had in their hand is no longer there. All right. So that which they thought they had found was dependent upon that. And when that was gone, so was what we're going to talk about this morning. Hallelujah. Last week we read this scripture. Don't have to go there, but I want to share it with you again. Isaiah 54 and 17, No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. 
This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. We talked last week about no scheme, no plot, no weapon, no attack from the enemy can prosper against us. Amen? Because God's Word has promised us that. I realize sometimes we look at things most of the time, 99% of the time, we look at things in the natural. And if things aren't going our way, we think the enemy's winning. Come on. If something broke, we think the enemy got, got a, a victory over that. Amen? Yeah. But he's not talking about victory in the carnal sense, not, not like we would talk about it. Because we look at this line and we think that we're losing or we're defeated. Mm -hmm. And that's the way the flesh, and even Malachi, this is a good scripture for you to think about when you think about the way the flesh looks at things. Malachi 3 and 14, God said, you have said, it is vain to serve God. <laughs> And what profit is it that we have kept his ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? Now that is something the flesh can understand. Because throughout my years of ministry, I've heard over and over again, it doesn't do any good to try to live right. Yeah. I might as well not even go to church. Yeah. I'm thinking about giving up. Yeah. How many people ever heard that? Amen. How many people ever thought that? Amen. Amen. What? good is it to serve God? That's our flesh. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's our carnal mind thinking. Amen? Yeah, right. Because why? Because people, we, we equate the favor of God or, or the victory or what I'm going to talk about today, we equate it with temporal things. Yeah. Right. With temporal things that will only last for a little while and then they're gone anyway. Amen? Amen. But what we're going to talk about today is not temporal. What we're going to talk about today, Brother Dave, is eternal. Amen. What we're going to talk about today can only be found in Him. Amen. People look for it in a lot of different things. They think they found it, and then it slips right through their fingers. Amen? Amen. This morning we're going to talk about peace. P-E-A-C-E. -E. Peace of mind. Amen? Peace in our life. Mm -hmm. We're going to find out where that comes from and how we can get the real deal. Because see, the world, and we're going to find out here in a minute in the statement that Jesus made, the world can offer peace, yes. but it's a temporal peace. Right. Getting ahead of myself. We have promise after promise in the Word of God. Yes. This promise about the weapons not being able to prosper against us, Brother Dave, we have that promise and countless others. Come on. That God has promised us in His Word. Yes, amen. But still... God's people seem to have a very have very little of this peace that I'm talking about today. Amen. So I want to title this message this morning. First part of it is a question. You have no peace? The last part of it is a statement. You can know peace. Yes. Amen? Yes. No peace? Question mark. No peace? Exclamation point. Amen. Right. You can know peace today. Yeah. Regardless of what's going on around you. Amen. Regardless of how the storm screams and the wind howls. and yeah. Regardless of the lightning that flashes and the waves that bash against your ship. You can know peace this morning. Come on. We live in a world where it seems like there's no peace. And nobody knows peace. Come on. We know peace today. Amen. we got to first realize where it comes from, who got it, and where we get it from. Amen? Amen. John, the 14th chapter, the 27th verse. John 14 and 27. That's the scripture that we're going to read this morning, one of them anyway. John 14 and 27, these are the words of Jesus. John 14 and 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Say, preacher, you crazy. I turned on the news this morning and there were earthquakes. There was famines. There was pestilence. There was terrorism, not just around the world, but in my neighborhood. Amen? There were gun 
gunshots last night while I laid in my bed. Uh, there were the next door. There was somebody screaming. Uh, somebody was found murdered just a couple of blocks over. Somebody's been breaking into houses. Uh, it seems like there's no peace anywhere. And you're telling me, let not your heart be troubled. Uh, neither let it be afraid. That's what Jesus was saying. This is the same Jesus that in Matthew 24 would tell his disciples that in the last days there will be false Christ. In the last days there will be wars and rumors of wars. In the last days there will be pestilence. In the last days the love of, the love of many shall wax cold. Amen? Amen? Families will turn against families. Right. There will be murders and there will be strife. Yet this same Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Amen? Fear not. Let not your heart be troubled. So how is this possible? in the day in which we live. For all of these things to be going on, but he would also say, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. As a matter of fact, over there in Matthew, the 24th chapter, he would tell them, let not your heart be troubled, and he would tell them that these things must first come to pass. Amen? The end is not yet. These things must come to pass. Amen. He starts this chapter, John, the 14th chapter, by saying these words, let not your heart be troubled. Listen to me. Jesus would tell his disciples over and over, let not your heart be troubled. Think about the life that lay before them. One where they had to hide. One where they had to escape. In order to, and some of them in prison spent most of their time in prison. Amen. Yet Jesus would say, let not your heart be troubled. Fear not. Jesus was not the most popular guy. In the Roman Empire, he was the least popular guy. Amen. Amen. <laughs> there were times they sought to lay hands on him and kill him. Right. And he would get away from them. Right. One time he would tell the disciples that I've got to go to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. They're going to deliver me up. I'm going to be killed. Mm -hmm. And this would stress Peter out so much so he would say, Not so, Lord. Mm -hmm. Let that be far from you. Right. But Jesus would make it plain that that's why he came. Right. But at the same time as he would warn them of the things that were coming upon the earth, he would say, fear not. Let not your heart be troubled. Yeah. Amen. So how do we get from that point to the point Jesus is talking about? Well, first we have to realize that he says, my peace I give unto you. Not just peace, but his peace. My peace I give unto you. That, that, uh, that statement denotes ownership. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That means the peace Jesus is talking about giving them is something He owns. Exactly. It belongs to Him. Exactly. You can't find it in a bottle of Jack Daniels. You can't find it in a deck of cards. You can't find it in a needle. You can't find it in meth. You can't find it in cocaine. You can't find it in pornography. You can't find it in money, wealth, fame, or riches. The, the, the peace that he's talking about can only be given, this gift only comes from him. He owns it as a matter of fact. <clears throat> can I preach this morning? Hallelujah. Isaiah would say, for unto us is a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. His name shall be called, I'm sorry, Wonderful Counselor. Isaiah did say that, just not here. Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of peace. Look at that word prince there in the Hebrew. It means he's the ruler of it. <laughs> the kind of peace I'm talking about and the kind of peace that Jesus was offering to them and said, my peace I give to you. And listen to what he said. He also said, not as the world give. He was letting them know there is a temporal peace. And you can understand what I'm talking about because we've all experienced it. Come on. There is a little bit of peace that comes from having money in the bank. Yes. Till the money's gone. Amen. When the money leaves, so does the peace. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Brother Dave, there is a little bit of peace that comes, a temporal peace that comes from being in good health. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Till you get up one day and you ain't in good health no more. Mm -hmm. The peace is dependent upon your health. Oh, right. The peace is dependent upon your money. Yeah. The peace is dependent upon your success. Mm -hmm. Come on. The peace Jesus offered them depended upon none of that. Mm -hmm. It depended upon one thing that we're going to look at this morning. Right. Hallelujah. Praise God. The world can give you peace. But it ain't the kind of peace Jesus was talking about. 
the kind of world that is the kind of peace that is found in the world, brother David, is temporal. It does not last. Yes. Amen. Come on. It's sort of like it's sort of like a replica of a ruby necklace right. or some other type of precious stone. Come on. It looks like it, but it ain't real. All right. When it's compared to the original, brother Sleese, it's not real. Oh. And many times, if you have something that is a fake. The only way to find out it's a fake is to take it to an expert. Let him put one of those little things on his eye. Right. And see if the diamond's really, if that's really a diamond or if that's fake. Amen. If that's really a ruby or if that's fake. Come on. When it's inspected closely, you find out that the piece that most people have today is not the real thing. How do you know, Brother Billy? Because it's dependent upon people, things, possessions. Listen to me. It's dependent upon other things. The peace that Jesus was offering them was not dependent upon anything in this world. Anything that this world had to offer. Amen. The angels would say in Luke 2 and 14, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. <laughs> Good will toward men. Now, what kind of peace? There was war then, and there's been war since then. Amen. Jesus said, I didn't come to bring peace. He was talking about because many of them wanted him to rise up mm -hmm. yeah. and to be the leader mm -hmm. in this, to have a kingdom in this world. Mm -hmm. He said, My kingdom is not of this world. Yes, right. yes, sir. The peace that Jesus came to bring is a peace of mind. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. A peace of spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> oh, it's far more better Amen. than the peace that they wanted. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the peace that they wanted don't last. That's right. You go back and look. Any time in American history or any time in the history of the world, that's what I need to say. Any time in the history of the world where it seemed like there was peace, something happened. Amen. You had one too many marbles than I do, so we got to fight to see who gets it. Amen. Right. Your, your borderline comes over about three inches too far, so we're fixing to have some bloodshed to find out who gets those three inches. There's something always that men wants to fight about. Right. But the peace that Jesus is talking about, it ain't, it ain't that peace. Come on. Not as the world giveth an eye unto you. So we know there is a temporal peace to be found in things today. But the peace that Jesus was offering them Come on. is the peace that the Apostle Paul spoke of in Philippians 4 and 7 when he said, And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace that Jesus was talking about cannot be understood with the carnal mind. True. I can look at Brother Sleese's life and I can stand off and I can say, well, he's got this, he's got that, he's got that going there. No wonder he's happy. No wonder he's... I can say, well, he's, I know why he's got peace. He's got this, he's got that, got a, he's got everything he needs. So I don't have any... I can understand that with my carnal mind. I can look at Brother Dave today and he drives over, drives over here and I can look and I think, man, look at that vehicle. <laughs> no wonder he's got peace. He gets out in his fancy $5,000 suit and walks into church doors and I, I don't have no trouble figuring out that whew, things are going good for Brother Dave. Yeah. I can understand that. But you know what passes the understanding of the carnal mind? is to see that everything and anything that hell had to throw, it threw at Brother Dave, but it didn't stick. All right. Amen. It didn't, it didn't cause him to sit down and give up. It didn't cause him to quit on God. It didn't cause him to stay at home. It didn't cause him to just backslide and say, forget it, I'm not going to serve God. Serving God is in vain. No. He said, nevertheless, like Job said, though God slay me, yet will I serve Him because there is a peace today that comes not of this carnal world or this carnal plateau, but it comes only from Jesus Christ. And then it doesn't matter what's going on. It doesn't matter what family members have turned their back on you. It doesn't matter how your bank account is in the red. Come on, bro. Because your peace is not dependent upon those things. Amen. That's peace that passes all understanding. Yes, sir. Amen. True. That's peace that passes all understanding. Come on, brother Bill. Hallelujah. They can understand the peace of Polycarp, the bishop, bishop of Smyrna. Maybe when he was over there in Smyrna yeah. doing the job of a bishop and not suffering any persecution. Right. Well, I can understand why. I can understand why he, and he, they did suffer some persecution, but I can understand why he's all right with that. Things seem to go pretty good for him over there. 
But what passes the understanding of the carnal mind is when they bring that 80 plus year old man before the king. Yeah. And the king says that I'll make your days, the rest of your days in this life, a hundred times better than the days you've seen before. Right. I'll give you anything and everything you want yeah. if you'll do one thing for me, mm. and that is denounce your faith in Christ. Mm. Now they could have understood if that old man had said, okay. Because yeah. they would have said, we didn't have no choice. Mm. Didn't have no choice. We talk about these people over here in these other countries, and, we, and even in the United States, Brother Sleece made mention of something today along those lines, not exactly the same, but people who hide their faith. Right. People who hide their faith. Right. The thing that concerns me the most about that is he said, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father. Amen. He said, if you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father. Yeah. So that kind of concerns me. Polycarp could have done that. The Apostle Paul could have done that. Come on. Amen? Yes. But the Apostle Paul gladly laid his neck down on Nero's chopping block for the witness of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Polycarp stood before the leaders of that day and said, listen to me. <laughs> the fire that you... Because see, they fixed and burned him to death. They fixed and burned him at the stake. Right. Listen to this old man. He said, the fire that you are threatening me with today, it's going to go out. Right. But the fire that you're in danger of, sir, Come on. is eternal. Jesus has never let me down. Amen. He's never done me nothing but good. True. <laughs> and I will not repent of my faith in Him. Come on, brother. Amen. True. That they could not understand. Right. What can they not understand about Stephen? They might could have understood. Well, he's you know he's got that Jesus thing going. Right. Things seem to be going okay for him. Mm -hmm. But just wait till the, till the screws are tightened. What do you think they thought whenever they were standing there stoning him to death? And he looked up into heaven and he said, Father, lay not this sin to their charge. All right. Oh, the carnal mind can't understand that, Brother Sleep, because that, Brother Rodney, is a peace that passes all of our carnal understanding today. Right. That's what Jesus was offering them. That's what Jesus is offering you. Amen? Amen. He's trying to teach his people. Do not allow your peace and your joy and your victory to be dependent upon the things of this world because sooner or later the, the crutch is going to be knocked out from underneath you and you're going to be standing there laying there. You're going to be laying there and you're, the thing that you had your hope in is gone. The thing that you got your peace from is gone. The thing that you got your victory from is gone. Jesus said, my peace I give unto you. The peace that I own. The peace that belongs to me. I'm giving it to you. Come on, brother. Not as the world gives you peace. Come on, preach. He said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. My, my, my. <laughs> not as the world giveth. Yeah. Amen, but peace that passes all understanding. So your money today will come and go. Right. And so will the peace that it brings. Amen. Amen. True. There are times when I look at our finances mm -hmm. and I feel, you know, well, everything looks pretty good. Yeah. And my peace only came from that. 80% of the time, I wouldn't have no peace at all. Because only about 20% of the time do I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> the rest of the time, I'm thinking, I don't know about this. <laughs> Amen. But money cannot bring you everlasting eternal peace. Right. It'll bring you a little bit Amen. till it's gone, and it'll go quicker than it came. True. Amen. That's true. It'll go quicker than it came. You spend 40 hours this week working. One trip to Walmart and it's gone. Amen. True. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's true. Your fame here today and gone tomorrow. Yes. So will the peace be that comes from fame. People, you find some peace in people. A lot of people's peace was dependent upon their marriage. Then their spouse died. Yeah. And then now they seem to have no peace. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's a hard thing. Right. I'm not saying that it's not. But our peace does not have to come from that. People let you down. Right. I've had people that were, I thought were some of my closest friends, Brother Dave. Yeah. Stab me in the back. <laughs> But they didn't take my peace with them. All right. You know, the world has a saying. Listen to me. The world has a saying. I'm going to give you a piece of my mind. Yeah. Mm. <clears throat> the problem is that you've allowed them to take the peace of your mind. That's it. Oh, can I say that again? This morning? I'm going to give you.
give you a piece of my mind and you know what they're talking about. But the problem is that we have allowed people to take the piece of our mind. Mm -hmm. They will do us wrong and we will sit around trying to figure out either why or how we're going to get back at them. Amen? Come on. We will nurse it. We will rehearse it. We'll just mull it over and over and over. And what they've done is they've stole your peace. Amen. They've took the peace. That's true. So if you let your peace be dependent upon people, you ain't going to have much because people will let you down. Absolutely. We're all flesh. Amen? Exactly. We all let each other down. Yes, if we hung out very much, there'd be things about me you ain't going to like. There'd be things about you that I ain't going to like. Amen. 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 Thank God that we don't get our peace from each other. Amen. 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 Jesus didn't say, now go get your peace from your brother. Amen. He said, I'm going to give you my peace. Yes. Not like the world's got, mama, but peace that passes all understanding this yes, morning. Sir. Oh, glory to God. Your home Amen. can bring you some measure of peace. Your job can bring you some measure of peace. Amen. Right. Until it's gone. Amen. Amen. True. Things of the world. Listen, feeling can bring you some measure of peace. Right. I've been around people, they can run on for the Lord and serve Him as long as they can feel Him. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. As long as they can feel His Spirit. Yeah. See, that the peace was in the feeling and not in the one that gives the feeling. Amen? Not the one that they were feeling. Come on. Because He's already promised us. Right. If you don't feel me, don't get discouraged. Don't get stressed out. Don't freak out on me. Amen? Because I've said, Lo, I am with you always. I'll go with you all the way to the end. Amen? Yes. He's already promised us today that He'd never leave us. But if your peace comes from the feeling, it ain't going to last very long. Amen. Amen? Because you're going to get to the place where you do not feel Him. Yes, sir. Amen? Yes, we just walk amen. through that. That's the, every one of us go through that. Yes, you ain't going to hear Him. Job said, I look for Him. I can't find Him. Amen? Yes, I don't know where He's at. I look to the left. I look to the right. Where's He at? I can't find Him. We go through that sometimes. Yes, sir. And if your peace comes from the feeling, Right. You ain't going to have peace very often. Mm -hmm. Amen. And like I said, I, I know people that as long as they felt the Spirit of the Lord, mm -hmm. they were in there. But the minute they went through that spot where there was no feeling, yeah. they fell away. Amen. Because their peace was dependent upon the feeling. That's right. I hope brother. you're getting this this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. That's good. So what is the peace of God dependent upon? One thing today. One thing. Nothing the world has to offer. It's not dependent upon money, fame, people, your home, your car, your clothes, your situation, your, your status in life. Come on. Your peace today is dependent upon one thing <laughs> that will never fade away, that will never pass away, that can always be counted on. That will, It's not like the stock market. It will not change. Amen. It's the same always. It's always been the same. As a matter of fact, the Bible says it was in the beginning. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the Bible says upon it, this world was formed. Amen? Right. I'm talking about faith in the Word of God today. That and that alone is the only place to find the peace that Jesus was talking about. Because then when you realize when things ain't going your way, you had peace while things was going your way because your peace came from those things. But the minute things turned against you, you begin to lose your peace. But you won't. You won't. If you can grab a hold of the promise that all things uh, work together for good to them that love God and to the call according to His purpose. Amen? True. I'm not saying we walk around laughing or smiling all the time. Uh, there have been times with tears rolling down my face. I said, God, I don't understand it. Right. If you're out there today and you want to know how in the world I have held on for so many years, hold on to your britches because I'm pleased to tell you. There have been times that everything went against me. Nothing was going right. The bank account was empty. The bill collectors was knocking on the door. It seemed like my health was taking a spiral downward. And I stood with tears going down my face and said, Lord, I don't understand it. It seems like everything is coming against me. But thank God today, even though I don't understand it, Lord, I don't like it. I know that your word says all things work together for good to them that love God and the call according to his purpose. You can have peace this morning in the midst of the storm as long as you realize who's in charge of the storm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Mm -hmm. True. You can have peace this morning when things are going wrong as long as you understand that all things work together for good to them that love God. Yes, sir. Or the call according to His purpose. Amen. The only place to find this peace that I'm talking about, the only place to find this peace that Jesus gives yeah. is faith in His Word. Amen. 
faith that you've already read the back of the book. Yeah. And you know that no matter how dark the day looks, no matter what it looks like, I'm a winner either way. If I go or if I stay, for I'll still have my Jesus each passing day. Amen. I'm not teaching you some new fad. <clears throat> I'm not bringing you some new doctrine. I'm telling you what the Word of God teaches us. Yes, Trust in His Word. Yes, His Word is truth. His Word will not let you down. His Word is the final authority on every subject, everything, every demon, every devil, every principality is subject to the Word of God to the Word of God. Amen? Yes. God is not a man that He should lie. He's not a respecter of persons. If He has said it, that settles it. There's not a devil. There's not a demon. There's not any carnal thinking that can change that. Amen, Brother Bill. Real peace comes from faith in His Word. Amen. Even in death. <laughs> oh, death, where is thy sting? Grave, where is thy victory? I'm telling you, we can find, we can have that peace today. Yes, sir. That passes all understanding. Right. It doesn't mean that you'll never. You're your flesh. That's what we got to understand today. We are flesh. Damn. Our mind has thoughts it shouldn't think. Right. I like Job. All right. Especially in the point to where that you see him at times when it just you know things is going real bad. And he'll say things like, you know, well, I should have never been born. That's his flesh talking. Right. Your flesh probably might have thought something along those lines before. But then you'll find him. You'll find that peace that was still there somewhere. Right. Covered up in some of the complaining. Amen. He said, I know my Redeemer liveth. Right. Praise God. When he has tried me, thank the Lord. I will come forth as gold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I wish we could get a hold of this today. Amen. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give, give I unto you. Uh, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Peace that comes from knowing what God's Word says and that He will do what He said He would do. Yes. Praise How could David write the 23rd Psalms when, when King Saul is hunting him down like a dog, Come on. trying to kill him, right. David is running from one cave to the other. Yes. Because he don't want to fight against Saul. Why? Because the anointing at one time rested on Saul and David respected that. True. Amen. That's true. Even though the anointing had departed, right. David still said that, I'm not going to do it. Yeah. So he's running, he's hiding. Yet David could say in the 23rd Psalm, and I can see him now, sitting in a cave over next to the wall yeah. by candlelight. Amen. <laughs> Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will give up. It's terrible. I can't go on. No, that ain't what he said. That's what we would have wrote. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they strengthen me. <laughs> How did David know that God was with him? Because he had told him. He was with him. True. Pretty sure, David. The Bible only says, I think one time, you correct me if I'm wrong, Bible scholar. Only one time that I remember David dancing. That's when he saw the Ark of the Covenant coming back into Jerusalem. Right. I might be wrong on that, but I almost I can guarantee you he wasn't dancing in that cave. True. I doubt very seriously that he was feeling, oh, I'm feeling a revival coming on, guys. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. No, his peace came from the fact that he's with me. Yes. Some trust in horses. Some trust in chariots. But I will remember the name of the Lord. <laughs> Oh, I wish I could preach. I feel, I feel like shout. I feel like dancing like David this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, my, my, my. They used to have a commercial. And <laughs> I know I'm going on and on. They used to have a commercial that said, you need a piece of the rock. Yeah. <laughs> we need the piece of the rock today. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
Jesus, the cornerstone, the chief cornerstone, the rock that followed the children of Israel in the wilderness that gave them water. Amen. Children of Israel couldn't keep peace out in the wilderness. Oh, they could. But only for a day or so. Till they got tired of what they were getting their peace from. Amen. We need water. Here's water. Oh, yeah. Things are going great. I'm tired of just this water. There goes their peace. Yeah. We need something to eat. Yeah. What is that? Woo, glory to God. It's angel food. Got that manna going. Got my peace now. Got my victory now. Next day, whew, I'm sick of this old bread. <laughs> Amen. Come on now. That's bringing it down to where the rubber meets the road. Amen. Right. We get a paycheck. Things are going good. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. The minute something breaks, tears up, or if the bottom falls out the bucket, oh God. Oh, what am I going to do? Amen. We're going to trust Jesus. That's what we're going to do. Amen. Because right. our peace doesn't come from what's in the bucket. Right. Our peace comes from Him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I wish we could get that this morning. Absolutely. I wish our brother Billy Douglas could get a hold of this. And not let go. Amen. Because this is what I need. The world offers a peace that is temporal. Right. Jesus offers a peace that is eternal. Amen. The world's peace is dependent upon the things that you get your peace from. Right. His peace is dependent upon His Word. That's right. And He said in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all three of these writers wrote it down, heaven and earth shall pass away but my words shall not pass away now you can read something in Matthew and then you read the account of it over there in Mark or Luke and it's a little different because Brother Sleece can see an event happen and he can get things out of it that I didn't I can see an event happen I get things out of it so when we write it it's the same account but there's little details maybe that I saw that Brother Sleece didn't see amen I'm convinced today that the only one that, that wrote in this book the last words that Jesus spoke when he said, it is finished, amen, is because he was the only one close enough to the cross to hear him when he said it, amen. The rest of them had ran. John, the beloved, is the one that wrote that. So, you see different things in different gospels, same stories or same accounts of things. But in all three of these, it's exact. Word for word, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Mark, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Luke, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. They got that. Amen. Amen. Come on. <clears throat> they got that. That's right. When they led them old boys to the cross to crucify them, or whenever they led them to the, to the chopping block like they did Paul, Paul said, I finished my course. Amen. I've kept the faith. Why? Because his peace and his faith was in the Word of God. Peter could go willingly to the cross because his faith was in the Word of God. It was in the Word that Jesus had spoken. Amen. Amen. That's how David could sing there in the cave when he was being chased. I'm getting ready to close. Don't come yet though, Brother Rod. I feel good this morning. I probably wish I didn't. Hebrews 13 and 5 says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things you have. For he had said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. Jesus talking to his disciples in the book of Matthew. The Bible says that he said, I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. <laughs> so the next time you say that He's forsaken me. He's not with me. Think about what you're saying. Amen. He said I'll be with you always. Yes. You're saying he ain't there. Oh. That's pretty close to calling him a liar. Alright. Yeah. Amen. Boy, that there. That's rough on rats, amen. That's pretty close to calling him a liar. That's right. He said I'm with you. You said he ain't. Oh. Wonder who's wrong. Amen. His word shall remain forever. Listen to this. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace, peace. whose mind is stayed on materialism and the things of the world. That's not what it says, Brother Dave. You know what it says. Whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Yes. Not in his billfold. No. 
No. Not in his riches. Come on. Not in his health. Not in his family. Right. But he trusts in him. Trust his word today. Yes. It's important for you to know his word today. Amen. As a matter of fact, it's the most important thing for you to know. Yes, is his yes. word. True. His word reveals to you him. You can't separate him from his word. Exactly. In the beginning was the word. Yes. The word was with God. The word the was, was God. God. Drop down to verse 14 says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. Oh, glory to God. Praise the Lord. Impossible to separate him from his word. Right. There's a song that says he's there when you need him. You can count upon his word. Amen. That's the kind of God that I serve. I serve. Have you seen this morning how that the world offers some semblance of peace, but it's <clears> not real? <throat> and how that he offers a peace that is eternal. And how we can have that peace is by knowing His Word. Amen. Faith in His Word and knowing that if God said it, I can count on it. Right. Amen. True. If God, even if this sickness takes my life, mm -hmm. yeah. oh my Lord, even if this sickness takes my life, Paul would say these words in 1 Corinthians 15 and 51, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal <coughs> shall have put on immor immorality, immortality, I'm sorry, Ooh, that's a big slip of the words there. She'll put on immortality. Then she'll be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? Oh, you can, you can speak a lot of words to people when they lose a loved one. Right. And I've been there. It seems like water on a duck's back. It just kind of rolls right on off. Mm -hmm. But you know where the only peace that can be found in that situation is? In what God's Word has to say. Amen. I'll see you again yes. on the other side. Amen. How do I know that? Because His Word tells me. Amen. What is that? that old, it may be a children's song. The last part of it says, because the Bible tells me so. Yeah, the B-I-B-L-E. -B -B -L -E. That's the book for me. I don't know if that's a song I'm looking for or not, but that's a good one. Yes. The Bible tells me so. Mm -hmm. Brother Billy, how you know? He, did, he created the earth in six days and rested on the seventh. I got scientists lined up over here from here to China that'll dispute you. I got one book written by one author that discredits every one of them. Amen? The evening and the morning were the first day. <laughs> and God said, let there be light. Amen. And God created man in his own image. Right. Out of the dust of the earth, he formed them. Amen. Put that in his scientific pipe and smoke it. All right. Amen. But we've got evidence. Yeah, I got his word. Guess what's wrong? Guess who's wrong? We talked about this a couple weeks ago. His thoughts are not your thoughts. Right. We're going to get over there. These smart scientists are going to get over there and they're going to figure out. It, well, we were wrong. Mm. We were wrong about how many years that piece of crust represented. Amen. Amen. True. Because we can count on His Word this morning. Amen. Yeah. God has said it. Oh, that's where I get my peace from. Yeah. It may look like I'm going down for the count, but I know that God's Word says that no weapon. It may look like Satan is attacking from the left, the right, the front, the back. No weapon that is formed against me shall prosper. Amen. Think I might starve to death. Refrigerator's empty. That's all right. David said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or God's seed begging for bread. Amen. We may have to stay on this morning one week. Amen. We're talking about peace today that people cannot seem to find. I'm telling you where you can find it. Yes, sir. Real peace. Real peace. <laughs> right. Jesus said, Not as the world give, give I unto you. Come on. Amen. Not as the world give. Give I unto you. My team lost a couple nights ago. But my peace didn't come from that. That's right. Your team may lose today. Right. 
You better hope your peace don't come from that. Amen. You better hope your peace doesn't hinge on the final shot of a ball game. All right. <laughs> True. True. Amen. Praise you better hope your peace don't depend on your pastor. He may be dead tomorrow. Mm. What am I going to do? Mm. You better have your faith in the one that ain't going to die. Amen. Amen. Faith in the one that's done been there and done that. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. Oh, my goodness. I got hushed for a run y'all off. Hallelujah. Somebody else this morning have something this morning. You want to thank God for peace. Amen.